Hey guys, today I am switching out my everyday makeup drawer for September. This is the first fall themed everyday makeup drawer of the year, which you know I'm excited for. First, I am going to give you a quick rundown of the products that were in here in August. I feel like I got a lot of use and a lot of enjoyment out of all of these products in my August rotation. So um, I actually don't have any declutters this time, which is good. That means I liked everything. So I'm just going to go through, give you quick mini reviews on everything, let you know how I liked everything, and then we will pick out a new set of products for September. And then of course, at the end, I will also do a get ready with me using some of those products. So really this half of the drawer here is my shop my stash stuff. I had the Tarte Shape Tape Creamy Concealer in here this month. I used this just about every time I did my makeup and I enjoyed it. I think this is a good concealer with good coverage. I have noticed that I get the best coverage out of this when I blend it out with a brush, which is, you know, that's the case with most concealers, but I do feel like this one in particular you lose a lot of coverage with a sponge, like a lot. So I almost see no point in using it unless I'm blending it out with a brush. But as long as I do use a brush with it, I really do like this concealer. It doesn't feel too thick or cakey or anything, but it definitely still offers some good coverage. I'm able to use it on both the under eyes and as a spot concealer. That's actually how I used it most recently. Then here were the three base products that I was using throughout August. My most used one, no surprise, was the Ilia Skin Tint. Really glad that I kept this in here for another month because I did have this in my drawer in July and I just felt like I didn't get around to using it as much as I wanted to. But this was pretty much my main base product all month long. I would just default to this one anytime I was getting ready. If I didn't have another foundation I wanted to use, this was the one. This is always just so beautiful on my skin. Very lightweight and breathable, but offers some actually really good coverage for a skin tint. I will miss having this in the drawer, but I'm going to go ahead and put it away and pick something different. I also had the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I used this for many different purposes. Some days I would just mix it with my foundation, apply it underneath to the high points of my face. Then the other foundation I had picked out was the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation. I definitely didn't use this as much as the Ilia foundation, that's for sure, but I did use it a handful of times, and I, for a second there, I was thinking maybe I will declutter this, because if you saw my last everyday makeup drawer video where I tried this on in the Get Ready With Me portion, I did not like how it looked on my skin. Like, it was just not getting along with my skin that day. But all of the other times I used this this month, I really didn't have any issues with it. It's like one in five times I don't like how this looks, but the other times I really enjoy it. So I think as long as I'm having an okay skin day, if my skin is really dry, I, I'm just gonna reach for something else like the Ilia because it, it's going to cling to dry patches and just not look great. But on days where my skin is leaning more normal, not super dry, then this works really well. But if you have super dry skin, I would not recommend this. You might think, oh, hydrating, that sounds like it would work well for dry skin. I would say this is more a good foundation for normal to oily skin, but, and my skin has been more on the normal side lately, so I'm able to get away with it, but yeah, a little bit finicky, but not so much so that I want to get rid of it right now. So I'm going to keep holding on to it. I still think it's fine, and the days I do like it, I really like it. Although I noticed they don't sell this on Ulta anymore. I think they, or at least if you live in the States, the only place I'm able to find it now is on the Essence website. So I don't know if they're phasing this out or what. And then the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter was a great addition to this drawer, especially with that Essence Pretty Natural foundation. I actually really like this tapped over the Essence foundation. I found that to be a really beautiful combo. This would just bring a little bit of glow back to my face because, like I said, that Essence foundation is actually pretty matte. Sometimes I felt like it looked just a little bit dull on my skin, so just tapping a little bit of this on top made a huge difference and just really revived my skin, so I love this product. I even mixed this with the Ilia Skin Tint a few times, not that this needed any additional glow, but it just works with everything, and it just gives the skin the most beautiful glow without looking metallic or too shiny or anything, so I, I just think this is such a fantastic product, and I just love it. I almost just want to leave it in this drawer permanently, because it just goes with everything so well, and I like to pair it with so many different foundations, so I may just you know what? I'm just gonna leave this in here. So just just gonna stay. Maybe forever. 
maybe just for the next month. We'll see. But I'm going to leave that in there for now. I had the AOA Studio Perfect Bronzer in here. I have been so impressed with this. I have the shade Frappe. This is such a great bronzer tone. It's warm without being too orange, and I just, I really like the way this tone works on my skin tone. I find it really easy to blend. It's not too dark. It's not too muddy. Honestly, cannot believe this is a dollar. This is better than a lot of the drugstore bronzers I've tried, so really loved that. Then I had these two blushes in, and I really loved both of these. These actually make a great pairing. The Koki Soft Gradient Blush in Bellissima, and the Tower 28 Cream Blush in Magic Hour. These actually aren't too different from each other, so I was able to wear these together. You guys know I love the Koki Blush in Bellissima. That's nothing new. I don't need to go over that again, but love that. Now, the Tower 28 Cream Blush, this really grew on me this month, specifically the shade. I think the formula of this is nice, uh, but I do think that you can get equally good formulas at the drugstore. But this specific shade is so nice. It's a nice nude peachy beige color. Warms up my cheeks without being too warm and really just melts into my skin tone really nicely. This shade almost gives the look of like a cross between a tan and a sunburn, so it looks very natural on my skin, just gives a very warm, sun-kissed glow, and I really enjoyed it. So glad I rolled this back in, because it had been a long time since I had used that. Then the highlighter I had picked out last month was the Sigma highlighter in the shade Sizzle. This is really pretty. I used this quite a bit as well. I feel like you can see like some good use in there now. That's a pretty concentrated swatch there, but you can see it is very, very intense. I do have to use a pretty light hand with this, otherwise it can look a little dark on me, but as long as I don't go overboard, it looks beautiful. So I'm glad I got to use that a bit more. Then these are the lip products of the month. I had the Essence Soft and Precise Lip Pencil in Happy. This has become one of my absolute favorite lip liners, and I especially love that lip liner with the Bite Lip Crayon in the shade Stinger. This has been discontinued ever since Bite went out of business, but I love this shade. It's a bit more bright than the Essence, but I like the slightly lighter and softer color of lip liner paired with a bold lip like this. I I actually prefer that over like an, a perfect match for this color because I feel like it makes it easier to pull off a bold color on small lips that way. The other bold lip I had in here was the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Persimmon. This is a bright orange color and I, I think I used this once in August. So I'm happy with that. I feel like that's about how many times I would have expected that I would use a bright orange lipstick in a month. It's definitely not a lip color that I wear very often, but I'm glad I was able to use it at least one more time before the summer came to an end because it's definitely... I mean, I guess I might wear this in the fall, but probably won't wear this much outside of like the summer and fall. Then the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump was a great light sheer peachy gloss to have in here. There's a look at that shade really nice light nude. I also found I really like to pair this with a light brown nude lip liner, like the Koki lip liner in nude. That's my go-to. And then the last lip product in there was the Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in Liar. I've always loved this. This is a good lip color for this sort of summer to fall transition time that we're in right now. I also wanted to show you, the panners in the audience will appreciate this, I have made it past the logo that's imprinted in the bullet. Do you see that Urban Decay logo there? And I've actually already worn down the very top of the D. You see that? All right, so before we pick a new set of products out, I also have decided I'm going to start including my monthly palette roundup in my everyday makeup drawer videos instead of doing a separate video at the start of the month. I just felt like those videos were getting a little bit repetitive, and so I figured this would be a good way to still let you know which palettes I used and how many times I used each one as part of this video. So I will, of course, leave timestamps if you would like to skip ahead to the product selection, but these are the palettes that I used in August. So not a huge stack, actually, this time. Um, but these two right here were my two most used palettes. First up was the Alter Ego Midsummer palette. I have not shut up about this all summer long. I also think this is a great color story for fall, so I have included it in my fall palette basket as well. I'm really looking forward to doing some fall looks with this. I love the olive greens over here, lots of great neutral shades. And then I also love that pop of lavender. I think that's so fun. So that one I used three times in August. I also used this one three times in August. This is the Nomad Okavango Safari palette. 
Oh my goodness, this palette has actually made me fall in love with olive eyeshadows, if you can believe that. It's been really fun just branching out into some colors that I don't often wear, and I just think this palette makes green really, really fun and really easy. Then these next four palettes, I used each of these twice in August. First up, the Sigma Ambiance palette. This is another one that I'm really excited to continue playing with into the fall. I love this color story. I used to, like a couple years ago, I would have hated this color story, but now I can't get enough of it. It's so pretty. I also used the Alter Ego Goddess palette twice in August. One of those two times was in the Testing New Drugstore Makeup video that I posted last week, and then the other time was in my patron and member live stream. We did a palette bingo with this. This is another palette that I've also added into my fall palette basket, which I'll link that video below. If you missed it, it's basically a shop my stash, but for palettes, and I picked all of my favorite fall palettes. This was one of them. I am really looking forward to doing some fall looks with this. I think it's so, so beautiful. I also used the Essence Coral Me Maybe palette twice in August. Love this one for summer. Um, I also did a short using this recently. I love, even though this is a really small palette, I love how versatile it is. All six of the shades are really quite different from each other, and you can get something really light and soft or something more dramatic. Yeah, there's just a lot you can do with this little $4 palette. I also used the Clarity So Amazing palette twice in August. I'm not going to show the inside because I don't want to spoil my project pan, which is coming after this video, so <laughs> stay tuned, but I did use that twice. And then these four palettes I used one time each. The Sigma Angela Bright palette, this is another one that I've added to my fall palette rotation. Now, this color story absolutely looks like fall to me, so really excited to get into this some more. The Alter Ego Coastal palette, also used this one twice. I did a look with this in my last speed reviews video. The Flower Desert Lights palette, I used this again. I actually paired this with the Hard Candy eyeshadow stick in the shade Stoned, which somehow was not in my drawer just now when I filmed my recaps. I think it had wound up back in my Alex drawers here. I used this a ton actually in August by itself, but I also used it as a base with the Flower Desert Lights palette one time this month, and I loved how that turned out. This is just a matte taupe eyeshadow stick you can see there. That I applied all over my lid and then over that I took some of this shade just all over, tapped some of this shade in the center of the lid, used this in the inner corner and this in the outer corner slash like as liner. That was actually one of my favorite looks this month. The other combo I discovered with this this month was this topped with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Ritz. There's that. I also filmed a short actually applying that to my eyes, but it just gives the most beautiful wet look to the eyes. It almost looks glossy. Really, really pretty. So those two were the eyeshadow combo of the month. Ritz actually was not in my everyday makeup drawer. A little quirky was, um, but I actually didn't end up using this at all. Really ended up using Ritz a lot more. So I ended up just kind of switching it out with Ritz like halfway through the month. Last but not least, this was the last palette that I used in August. I used this one time. I think I received this in PR on the very last day of August. This is the Nomad Ghost Town palette. Like I said, I've only used it once so far. I used these two sage greens over here and this taupe and this green on the lid and the quality was exactly what I have come to expect from Nomad. I, I think this is the fourth Nomad palette I've tried and all four of the palettes that I've tried, the quality was amazing. These shimmers in particular feel very creamy to the touch though, even more so than I remember from other palettes. Very creamy and just some really unique colors in here, especially like this half of the palette I'm really feeling drawn to. I, I feel like I don't have a whole lot of greens quite like that in my collection, so lots of fun color combos in here. Really looking forward to using this more throughout the fall, and I'll continue to update you on my thoughts as I use it, but that is my palette recap for the month for those of you who are following along with that. Now let's pick out some new products for my everyday makeup drawer for September. All right, so starting up here with my base products, one that I feel like I haven't used in a while and I miss it, this is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I need to shake this. This is a bit on the lighter coverage side, but it has such a beautiful finish and a really smooth look on the skin, so really looking forward to using this again. And then I think for a higher coverage foundation, I'm going to grab my Physicians Formula Butter Believe It foundation. I do feel like I start to gravitate more towards full, fuller coverage and higher coverage and even matte base products in the fall. 
fall and winter. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I do a lot of more like full glam type looks this time of year, so that's when I like to wear higher coverage foundation. And I really like the look of matte skin in the colder months. I feel like I'm not as likely to get sweaty, so it holds up a little bit better, and yeah, just in general, I really enjoy it. So this is one of my favorite foundations the highest coverage of all of the ones that I have, and it just always looks so good on my skin. And then for concealer, I, I just have these four, and usually I just pick the one that I haven't used in the longest, and I think that one is the LA Girl Pro Conceal. This, I would also say, has a little bit more of a matte finish, which I actually kind of like in a concealer. I do feel like this can look a little bit drying on my under eyes, so I have to make sure they're well prepped, but I think with my new revolution under eye corrector which is very radiant and very luminizing i actually think that paired with this is going to be a really nice combo so i'm looking forward to trying that all right then for some cheek products here is a blush that i really like in the fall this is the nyx sweet cheeks blush in the shade nude tude this is a beautiful slightly more brownish blush obviously it shears out quite a bit once you blend it but I just think that is such a nice nude cheek color for the fall. I think it's going to go with a lot of my fall palette picks. And I have not used this in a hot minute. So that'll be my cream liquid blush. I also wanted to pull out my e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in Feelin' Shady. This is very cool toned and I have a very warm toned bronzer in my project pan. So I figured it would be nice to have this as a cooler toned option if I'm in the mood for that. So that one I'll put in. Then for my powder bronzer, I think it's been a while since I've included my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer in my everyday makeup drawer. And this, as you know, is one of my top, top favorite bronzers of all time. It's a really light shade. I like that because it just always looks really natural on my skin, but it does warm up my complexion just a bit. This is that bronzer that I wear when I really don't want to look like I'm wearing bronzer, but it just gives me a little something, a little contrast to my face. A blush I've actually been feeling really drawn to lately. I actually pulled it out and used it yesterday, and I was reminded how much I love it, so I'm gonna put it in this uh, September drawer. This is the Flower, Flower Pots blush in the shade Sweet Pea. It's actually kind of a cooler pink shade, but I love this color when I want to wear a pink but I don't want to do that super bright bubblegum pink. This one is very, very easy to pull off. And this is one of those blush formulas that you practically don't even have to blend. Like, it it almost immediately looks blended as soon as you put it on your cheeks. It's, it's wild. I mean, you'll have to blend a little bit, but it's very, very easy to blend. Never has looked patchy. It has this super smooth texture, and it just, like, practically blends itself. All right, I guess I'm going a little ham with the blushes here, but this is another one I want to add in. This is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Berry Amore. Yeah, another great nude, slightly beige color. It's got a little bit of glow. But this one I don't find quite as glowy as Luminoso from Milani. This is another one. I think this would actually look really pretty on top of the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush. I think those two would go really well together. Or just this on its own I think would be really pretty for like a toasty fall look. For highlight, I want to pick out this one. I think this was in my drawer at some point earlier this summer. This is the Estate Baked Highlighter in Lit. One of my favorite highlighters, actually. Very underrated. You don't hear much about this brand, but this is such a nice, slightly softer highlight. It definitely still packs a punch, but it's not quite as intense as like that Sigma one I was showing you guys earlier. It's a little bit more subtle. It's this really pretty golden color, and I think this will go nicely with a lot of those other blushes I picked out. Next door down is my lip product drawer. One of my favorite lip colors for this time of year is actually my other e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick. This is in the shade Nectar. Yeah, it's hard to describe this color, but really the magic happens when I apply it to my lips. Like, there's just something about this exact color and this undertone and everything. It's just the right slightly orangey nude, but it's just bright enough that it doesn't pull too dark on me. And for my tinted balm section, this is the one that I was thinking about earlier. I was like, oh, I want to put that in my everyday makeup drawer. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine in the shade Happy. And it's this perfect My Lips But Better nude shade. 
that's the one on top there. You can see it gives a nice little bit of shine. It really just feels like a lip balm, honestly. It just feels so comfortable. And I love this color. It's like a slightly cooler toned mauve. Truly a My Lips But Better kind of shade. Very much a purse lip. And then I also want to pick a gloss, of course. Let's do this one. This is the Sigma Renew Lip Oil in the shade Tint. So there's that, definitely the most sheer, just gives this nice light wash of that nude color. This is really comfortable. I've really been enjoying this. This is one of those lip products that just goes with anything. So when I'm in doubt, I can just throw this on. This is another one of those products I think I should honestly just leave in my everyday makeup drawer forever. The Koki Lip Liner in Nude. A great nude light brown. Doesn't have too much pink to it, doesn't have too much orange to it. It's just very neutral, goes with everything not too dark. That one I'm going to put in, I think that'll go with, I mean, honestly, that'll go with all three of those shades. And then let's put this one in. This is the AOA lip liner in the shade Cuddle. I felt like Cuddle was a good sort of cozy fall shade name. And I'll swatch that one here. This one's a little bit peachier, you can see. I think that will go really well with that e.l.f. lipstick in Nectar. And I do like this AOA retractable lip liner formula. I have this one and I have the shade Satin. I think it's a nice formula. I don't think it's anything to write home about necessarily. Like, it's not going to be nearly as budge-proof as those Koki lip liners, which that's what I love so much about those, is they are budge-proof. Like, they lock into place. This is not going to do that, but it does give you just a nice soft outline, and it does the job. I like the shade. So that'll be my other lip liner that I roll in. My eye drawer, I have taken to simply throwing all of my single shadows into this bin, and I kind of like it that way because it's just fun to dig through. We had, I had the hard candy shadow stick in stoned in my last drawer. Now I'm going to put in the shade Pony. This is a nice purpley taupe. So there's what that shade looks like. Definitely one and done shadow material. I definitely don't use this one as much as I use stoned, but I kind of just want to I, I want to get better acquainted with Pony here because I do really like this color. So that will be my September shadow stick. And then I'm going to put, since I've been loving Ritz from ColourPop so much, I think I just want to put this in my everyday makeup drawer as well. I've just been loving this as a topper. Kind of want to try it as a topper to that shade. There's what that looks like on its own. I like the, the base is this sort of translucent tan color. And then it's got just a ton of this silvery sparkle to it. So it makes a gorgeous topper, makes a gorgeous one and done shadow. Yeah, just a very useful shade. I've only had this for a few months now, but it def you can definitely tell I have been getting my use out of this. So those will be my two eyeshadow picks. And of course, I'm not picking any palettes for my drawer because I keep those in my seasonal palette basket, which I picked out just the other day. So like I said, I'll link that video below if you want to see my fall palette shop my stash. All right, everything fit in the drawer quite nicely, and these are going to be the products that I reach for the most in September. So many favorites in here, so many great fall colors. So to finish off the video, as always, I like to do a get ready with me using some of these products, so let's go ahead and get into that now. Okay, so I've already applied some of the e.l.f. Jelly Pop primer a few minutes before I sat down to film this portion, just so that that would have a chance to sink in before I go in with my base products. So for my base today, I want to use this combo, the e.l.f. Halo Glow and the LYS Triple Fix Foundation. So I kind of just dotted both of those all around my face and now I'm blending them out with my sponge. Okay, I love that finish. I feel like it looks glowy without being overboard. Like it's just the right amount of glow and it just looks so natural on my skin. Next for this LA Girl Pro Conceal. I used to not love this concealer, but it's kind of grown on me in recent months. Like really ever since the last time I put this in my shop, my stash, I really have not minded it. I remember I went through a phase where I just didn't love this, but lately I don't mind it, especially when I top it with the Sigma Color Corrector, which is what I have almost always been doing with any concealer that I use. I don't know, it just makes it look a lot better. I do feel like this is a very brightening shade. Usually I prefer an under eye concealer that's just like a skin tone match, but that's where the color corrector comes in. It kind of tones down just how bright it is since the color corrector is a little bit deeper. So there's that concealer. It does not look bad at all. I really like how much coverage it has, and I also like how it isn't too glowy so it doesn't like emphasize my under eye bags because sometimes I feel like if a concealer is too glowy it kind of like 
emphasizes my under eyes a little bit more than I would want. So I, I'm kind of enjoying that. I am going to go over that with my Sigma color corrector, but first I'm going to apply some of the e.l.f. putty bronzer. I have to make sure I get a small enough brush for this bronzer because it is a very small little pot, but I actually kind of like a small brush for contour. I think it allows me more precision. This is the BK Beauty 109 brush. I almost feel like I might be close to hitting pan on this e.l.f. putty bronzer. Definitely has a very deep dip in it. I'm just not sure how far down it goes, but honestly, it's starting to seem like I might be getting close to hitting pan. It would be really awesome if I could hit pan on this by my next everyday makeup drawer. Okay, I think I, I think for blush today, I do want to do a combo of the NYX Sweet Cheeks liquid blush and the Milani Baked Blush in Berry Amore. Ever since I pulled these out, I've been really curious to see what these, these would look like together. So I'm going to go in, of course, with the Sweet Cheeks first. I love that almost brown nude color. It's really like the only blush I have that's quite that color. And this formula does sheer out quite a bit, so I don't have to be too careful with how much I'm applying. Is that not just the prettiest blush color for the fall? And I did put a lot on my nose because honestly, my nose is super red today. I have such allergies recently. I don't know. I feel like over the past year or so, I've gotten a lot more like my allergies have just gotten a lot more intense. I don't know if does that just happen when you get closer to 30? Is that just has anyone else experienced that? Because I feel like I've never had really bad allergies in my life lately. And it's not just to things like pollen. Like I've somehow developed a fragrance allergy. I no longer can spray perfume directly on my skin where I will like break out in hives almost. So I can put it on my clothes and I'm fine, but I like my skin cannot handle it, but I'm kind of over it. I miss the days when I was not allergic to things, but I decided to just lean into having a red nose and just applied even more blush to my nose than usual. Not a bad strategy if you ask me. Before I powder, I'm going to tap a little bit of Sigma color corrector. I just mix both sides. This is running very low. I just wanted to tap that over my darkest areas. And now I'm just setting my under eyes and my face with the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. I also want to use a powder bronzer today. I want to use the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer just to warm up my face a little bit. All right, then I'm going to top my cheeks with that Milani blush in Berry Amore. Just going to top that mainly on the higher points of my cheekbones. That is so pretty. I love the amount of glow that this gives. If you look closely at this blush, it is marbled and it has both like a rosy color and that golden bronze color mixed in. That is so pretty. And then the highlighter I picked out was that Estate Highlighter in Lit. I'm just going to take a little bit of that on the very tops of my cheekbones. Took some on my nose, Cupid's bow. Next, I'm just priming my lids with this Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer. I have determined this is not my favorite eyeshadow primer. Sometimes my eyeshadows do crease when I wear this. Other times, like it still gets the job done, but yeah, I don't. I wouldn't recommend this Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer. I just think you're better off just getting like the $7 Milani one or any other. <laughs> the CoverGirl one is also really good. All right, brows are on. Now for today's eye look. I picked out from my fall palette basket this palette right here, the Ace Boutte Flare. I have been avoiding this palette, but I really want to use it today. I feel like there are so many beautiful, rich fall tones, some really pretty like jewel tones as well. I think I'm going to start today's look with the shade Cider, this mustard yellow. That is what I want to start with because that shade is calling my name. Just starting by buffing that into my crease. I think I want to deepen up my outer corner with hazelnut, this dark red shade. I appreciate I'm not getting a lot of kick up with these mattes, I have to say. That is nice. And as I usually do with Ace Boutte mattes, I'm really treating them like pressed pigments. So I'm kind of just packing them on where I want them and then really just lightly blending out the very edge. But I do feel like these mattes are really easy to work with so far. It's definitely looking a little bit brighter than I wanted. So I'm going to dip into Acorn now, this dark brown. I'm going to build that up on the outer corner as well, but keeping it a little bit closer to my lash line.
This is looking a lot more autumnal now with that brown. Ooh, okay. I like I like where this is headed. So on my lid, do I go in with the shade Firefly? I think that is probably my best choice. There's also Biscotti, but that one has almost like a purple undertone that I don't think would go with these super warm colors. So I'm going to take some of Firefly on my finger that is bright orange. I think to make that somewhat more wearable, I do want to top it with ColourPop Ritz. I just want to brighten up my lid a little bit, and I think that will complete this eye look. I think Biscotti, that light shimmer shade there, I think that will work well as an inner corner highlight. Yeah, I feel like the purpley undertone that that has is not quite as apparent when I put that next to these warm tones. Okay, I'm happy that we used this today. I think that was a good challenge. Honestly, I feel like all of those shades performed really nicely. I didn't have any issues with the actual quality of these shadows, so... Hmm, okay. I'm excited to keep using this this fall. For mascara, I'm using the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal. And I have really been liking this mascara. This is actually my new favorite in my collection. I don't know if I like it as much as Milani Anti-Gravity. I do think that one is still my favorite, but this formula is really nice. This is very volumizing. It makes my lashes look really long and dramatic. So this has been a win and it doesn't smudge or flake. I didn't put any sort of shadow or liner on my lower lash line today, so I did just do a light coat of that on my lower lashes. Okay, so on the lips, I think the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Nectar is going to be a great match for this eye look. But first, I'm going to line my lips with that AOA Studio Lip Liner in Cuddle. I'm going to mix in a little bit of the Koki Lip Liner in Nude, just to add a little bit more brown to that. Hi, B. Mmm, nice! Oh my goodness, this look has gotten me so excited for fall. What about you, B? I'm gonna finish off the look with a little bit of the Revolution Infinite Setting Spray that I'm currently testing. Okay, well, this look was so much fun to put together. It's actually gotten me really excited to keep playing with the Ace Boutte palette. And really with all of these other products, those blushes especially, I think these were really good picks for some fall looks. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this everyday makeup drawer. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel further. I do a bonus video and a bonus live stream every month for my patrons and members, so I would love to have you. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!